catfish that can talk. To be honest, this is not the kind of thing I expected to find out this morning. So meet Platodorus armatulus. When these catfish are scared or threatened, they make a croaking sound. And it's pretty funny. Sometimes catfish make these sounds when they're looking for their own kind. For example, if you separate one catfish from its school, it'll begin to croak. Actually, it's no coincidence that these catfish and their relatives are called talking catfish. Many of them can make audible sounds, and they do it in a number of ways. For example, they produce a loud clicking noise by rubbing their spiny pectoral fins against their body armor and then resonating their swim bladder using a muscle in the back of their skull. And if you still don't have a clue how it works, don't be upset. I also didn't get it. The anatomy of fish is quite complex. Fish are actually much more talkative than you might think. A recent study showed that they often communicate using sounds, and this feature has been present throughout the entire evolution of fish. Scientists claim that the ability to produce sound evolved independently 33 times. Some fish species have been talking for at least 155 million years, and apparently still have something to say. Early on, people only studied sounds that could be heard by the human ear above the water's surface. Later, an underwater microphone called a hydrophone helped discover that it's also quite loud under the water. Researchers believe that fish talk about a wide variety of subjects, including food and reproduction. They use sounds to attract females, scare away predators, protect food or territory. And you can even pick up differences in fish voices. Scientists have been recording the sounds of various fish for 18 months, and they got very interesting results. This is what, for example, terrapontids sound like during spawning. A real fish party. And this is the mullaway, also during a breeding season. The species behind the other two voices are unknown, but it's still worth checking them out. It's certainly surprising that they began to study the voices of fish not so long ago. However, scientists have excuses. First, they had to invent adequate equipment. And second, well, who could even imagine fish could actually talk and do it so actively that this might be of interest to science? Researchers say that only a small part of the animal kingdom can imitate human speech. It's believed that the brain and vocal apparatus determine whether this is possible. That is, you need to be smart enough to make human sounds. You shouldn't expect some mice to suddenly speak perfect English. Although seals can do it. A seal named Hoover was especially good at this. He lived in the New England Aquarium in Boston and is believed to be the world's first mammal that was trained to imitate human speech. Hoover's mother died, but people managed to save the baby seal, so he grew up in an ordinary human family. At some point, Hoover began to imitate his owner's accent and say his most common phrases. When the seal grew up, they had to give him to the New England Aquarium, where scientists finally became interested in his talents. We know that Hoover could say phrases like, come over here, get out of here, and hello, how are you? Scientists were baffled by his ability to imitate human speech. They managed to establish that the seal speaks better than parrots, and Hoover became especially talkative during mating periods. He must have used the knowledge of the human language to get better chances with the ladies. Back then in the 1970s, it was still not clear what seals were capable of. Only decades later, scientists finally began to get to the bottom of things. For example, they've noticed that if you increase the noise level around young seals, they begin to raise their voice, just the way people do. Such results hint at the possibility that seals may have connections between their brain and larynx. So far, these connections have only been found in humans. Another study confirms the uncanny ability of seals to imitate human speech. They're indeed capable of learning and repeating many of the complex sounds fundamental to human speech. And it's not just about making clear vowels. Keep in mind this is a skill many of our closest primate relatives can't achieve. Seals can also recognizably sing the first few tunes of melodies. For example, the Star Wars theme song. 
Seals have a rare combination of traits that many other creatures don't, including a key anatomical advantage, a larynx or voice box, much like the one found in humans. It's still unclear why seals have such an exceptional ability and not some other animal. Perhaps this has something to do with their dynamic social structure. Who else can imitate human speech? Orcas, of course. I sometimes think orcas can do anything at all, if they really want to, of course. An international team of researchers working with two orcas in an aquarium in France found that orcas are capable of imitating human speech, including words like hello and bye-bye and a range of exclamations. Hello? <coughs> Amy? <coughs> One, two. <coughs> One, two, three. Bye-bye. <laughs> From this, we can conclude that orcas have the ability to memorize the sounds they hear. This also explains why orcas from different parts of the planet sound differently. Yes, orcas literally have dialects. And orcas from different regions might not quickly and easily understand each other. Most likely, they'll have to think and ask again if that's how animals generally converse. At the same time, scientists strongly doubt that orcas understand what they say. I mean, it's more of a mimicking with no real meaning behind it. There's no evidence that even one of the orcas understood what hello actually meant. Now to the story that really made me laugh. In 1984, handlers at the National Marine Mammal Foundation in San Diego heard a strange mumbling coming from a whale and dolphin tank. It sounded like a conversation between two people in the distance, but it was impossible to make out what exactly these people are talking about. However, the mumbling sounded over and over again. This went on until one day, a diver surfaced from the tank and asked, who told me to get out? It was then that the handlers realized that all this time, it was a male beluga whale named Nak who was talking. They started recording his vocal exercises, and this kept going for several years. Turned out, Knox spoke both under the water and while on the surface, spontaneously and on command, alone and with people around. Though Knox didn't use human speech with his kin, I guess he thought they wouldn't understand it anyway. Interestingly enough, the rhythm and amplitude of his vocal bursts and the intervals between them were found to pattern those of human speech, as well as the main frequencies of the sound. They were somewhere a few octaves below the usual sound characteristics of his whale species. Not copied people for about four years, but then reached maturity and stopped his vocal exercises. Either Nock has lost the ability to make human sounds or an interest in it. But why did Nock do it in the first place? Well, he just seemed to enjoy it. This was an animal who was willing to try anything. He was pleased to imitate speech, to observe people and their reactions, to establish a connection. In short, for Nock, it was a way of interacting with other species in an interesting way. And since beluga whales are capable of such tricks, elephants must be too. After all, aren't they one of the smartest animals on the planet? And we managed to find a couple of examples. Perhaps the most impressive one is an elephant named Kashik, who lives in Everland Theme Park near Seoul. Kashik mimics human speech and communicates with his keeper. Yeah, he can't boast a large vocabulary. He knows about five of the most primitive words, including no, good, and hello. It's said that Kashik makes a convincing impression of a human voice, but scientists don't believe that he actually understands the words he says. It's probably just senseless mimicking. It's not clear why Kashik started mimicking human speech at all, but cognitive biologists suggest it may be due to his childhood experiences. Kashik was the only elephant living in the zoo for about five years in his youth. At an important stage of development, he communicated only with people. This may well have influenced Kashik in such a way that he began to adapt his vocalization, making it more human. The logic behind this is very simple. If you make the same sounds as other members of your group, then you fit into this group better. This is also observed in other species capable of imitating someone else's speech. Too bad Steve and I don't know Korean, so we can't estimate how similar an elephant's speech is to a human's. But if there are those among you who understand Korean, share in the comments how you'd rate Kashik's pronunciation. Yeah.
There was another elephant that seemed to be able to use a large amount of meaningful human speech, Batir. That was the elephant's name. He lived in a zoo in Kazakhstan in the Soviet Union and had a vocabulary of over 20 phrases. For example, he could ask the keepers for water and food, as well as praise or chastise himself. Apparently as a bonus, Batir imitated various sounds like barking, whistling, and a gnashing sound of rubber on glass. Soon these abilities attracted the attention of the media, and Batir's recordings ended up on the radio and television. The story of the talking elephant from Kazakhstan has also been included in several books on animal behavior and in the proceedings of several scientific conferences. Here's the thing, though. Batir's abilities have never really been studied by scientists, so it's likely that people simply indulged in wishful thinking, and Batir didn't really know how to speak in a meaningful human-like way, he just figured out how to make funny sounds. Well, since there are animals that imitate human speech, or perhaps even speak like a human, there's got to be animals that talk smack. You probably remember the story of the parrots at the zoo who learned a few curse words, and were so prolific at swearing they had to be moved away from the visitors. But here we have a completely different story. It's about an Australian musk duck male named Ripper. Ripper was raised in captivity in the Tidbinbilla Nature Reserve and was once recorded making the sound of a slamming door as well as saying, you bloody fool. Researchers believe this is a phrase Ripper likely heard from his caretaker on numerous occasions. True, they're not sure how old the bird was when this phrase was first heard, but at the time of recording, Ripper was already four years old and he cursed like a human during an aggressive mating display. By the way, it's possible that the caretaker said to the duck, your bloody food, and Ripper imitated the word food instead of fool. But it's impossible to understand what exactly the bird meant, especially considering the fact that the recordings were made more than 30 years ago. <laughs> Though Ripper isn't the only example of a talking duck of this species, in 2000 there was another Australian musk duck in the same reserve which imitated a duck of a different species. It might not seem like anything special, because it's still bird talk, but it seems to me that ducks don't really care who to imitate. For them, these are just incomprehensible sounds that other animals make, just like we don't care what exactly we say when we meow to cats. We know that other musk ducks, this time from the UK, also use sound imitation, reproducing sounds like the coughing of their keeper and the squeaks of a turnstile. See you later.